I got into science by first of all doing a degree in psychology and that degree is quite biologically oriented so I became more and more interested in the brain and decided to do a PhD in neuroscience. I'm a professor of physics. I research and lecture in physics in Cambridge. My actual area of research is what's known as soft matter physics which is pretty much physics of everyday stuff like food and animals, plants and plastics. It was only when I left school and started to work in labs and then do my degree, that's when I started to realise that there was this stereotype, there was, there was this attitude that it was unusual for a woman to be doing science. The Royal Society was founded over 350 years ago and of course it was only men doing science and, and philosophy around then. Society was organised in ways that implicitly were sexist. Women would not have been expected to be engaged in discussion in public places. I think that just would have been seen as rather odd. This is an early paper by Hauter on the electric arc, which she wasn't allowed to read. It had to be read by a sort of sponsor for her. She was nominated and was declined on the grounds that she was married. Despite the fact lots of men fully recognised her ability and the excellence of the science she was doing, we have moved on since then. So this is Alice Lee's paper mm. about Brain size yeah. and intelligence. Alice Lee was really interesting. She was working in the late 19th, early 20th century on the relationship between the size of the skull and intelligence. It was previously believed that intelligence was related to skull size and that men have bigger skulls than women on average. So men are more intelligent than women on average. And she disproved that in her paper. The Sex Disqualification Act was introduced in 1919, which meant at that point that the Royal Society couldn't explicitly exclude women, but the first women weren't elected until 1945. And it meant it was possible that other women could aspire to this, because up till that point, they must have wondered if ever the society would let women in. This is an early paper by Kathleen Lonsdale, quite a long time before she was elected. Oh, yes. Her election was along with Marjorie Stevenson, mm. so the pair of them got elected together. Amazing, but possibly mm. also intimidating. I've been on several different committees at the Royal Society and they've all had a really good proportion of women on them. Uh, so from what I see of the Royal Society, it's not this kind of bastion of male dominance at all. Nothing happens quickly, but the more women publishing in science and then becoming FRSs would have encouraged younger women to see women can take part in science too and reach the highest echelons of scientific society becoming FRSs.